Junior is going to be doing the preaching to us today. I know he's been uh, thoughtful and in prayer about it. Uh, pay attention and open your heart this morning and receive the word that God has, has to give us today. Amen. Don't let it just fall on deaf ears, but let it, let it affect you. Let it, let it enter your heart and let it affect your life. And he may want to sing a song. I don't know what he wants to do, but we'll see how he's feeling. But anyways, give him your attention today, would you? And, and listen to what the Lord has to say to you. Trials here are sometimes many. And all times my free grow weary. And it seems that I would stumble. today. Uh, always I desire just to be a vessel and a servant that he can use and work with. And if you would stand with me and we'll go ahead and pray and ask the Lord to bless his word. Let's all bow our heads. Our gracious Lord. Lord, I love you and praise you. God, you know every heart here today, every soul, every man. God, just bless, anoint your servant, God. Give me lips to pray. Anoint lips to pray. Just bless and speak to each one. Amen. I'm going to, I'm not going to sing today. Uh, <laughs> Some of you may be going off. Some of you may be going good, good. 
I was at a restaurant there yesterday in downtown here, and man, that place was packed out. And I thought, a thought entered my mind to tell somebody, well, I, maybe I should start singing, son. I'll clear them out. <laughs> uh, but I want to go to Mark, the ninth chapter of Mark. Got a little different thought today, and I pray, Lord, just, just bless. Not for my sake that, that I, you know, do a good job on my account, but that I do a good job on the account of each and every heart today and each and every, those that might have a need in some way. You know, I believe, and, and, I, and I've walked this way a long time, and, but I've not always walked the straightest or the tallest or, or done everything just right. But listen, God is, I've tried to hold to his hand and he's held to mine. You know, so I, I but I don't have it made yet. I, I've, I ain't there yet. But I've got faith and I believe. In Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And when, he had, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him, O, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. He said, But if thou canst do anything, Have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. You may be seated. You know, the Bible tells us here that the man that brought his son went to Jesus' disciples and talked to them about casting out the evil spirit and said that they could not. But there in that 23rd verse, or the 22nd verse, he said, but if thou canst, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him plainly, he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Listen, he didn't just limit it to the need right there at that present time. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Listen, if we can believe, 
You know, that doesn't stop there with, it, with that situation. But listen, we need to understand that if we believe, all things are possible. I want to turn to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. I want to read one verse here. The 6th verse, Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God, or to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, the very first thing that will get you in touch with God, if you come to a house of worship, if anything's going to take place, if you're going to receive anything from God, listen, you must first believe in God. You must first believe that God exists, that He is. Listen, and that He is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. I want to read some more here. I'm going to read 1 through 10. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Listen, we, the Bible tells us that. And if we believe it, we're going to, we believe it through faith. Because we have no, no evidence, no evidence of it other than his word. And our willingness to believe. So through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Listen, that's a little twist of words there sometimes, but... Simply what he's saying is everything that we see. We believe through faith that God created the world. And no man has seen God. But listen, through faith we believe that. And by faith, Abel. Now listen, if we believe a lot, you can go down here, walk down the street, and you can ask people, random people, do you believe in God? And I still believe that most of the time, the answer will be yes. That people believe in God. But the key, do we believe enough to put actions behind it? You know, there's a lot of things that's easy. Words are cheap. You know, my grandma used to say, actions speak louder than words. If we believe, Truly believe. Listen, we need to put some action behind it. If we truly believe, we will put some action behind it. And the fourth verse said, by faith, Abel. By faith, Abel offered up or offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Listen, that's no small thing. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God, I believe it was 365 years, and he was not. He he seemed to, or he failed to exist on this earth because God took him. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For he had, before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse below that says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not, as, not seen as yet. Listen, God told Noah to build an ark. That it was going to rain. Listen, and it had never rained. It had never rained. So Noah had no evidence. Just through faith. He believed God. He believed the word of God and he moved. He moved. He took some action. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Listen, God told him to go out into a strange land, some place that he had never been. And by faith, listen, he began that journey. And it was a, to a land that afterwards he would inherit. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. Listen, he didn't, it wasn't no easy road. And, and sometimes walking for God, it's no stroll through the park. The Bible says that for us to take up our cross and follow him. Listen, there is a cross. It's, no, it's not everything handed to you on a silver platter. But I want to read. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Well, wait a minute here. Mark. Getting ahead of myself. Got to look at them few notes I got down there. Every once in a while. Because sometimes I do well to remember my name. Mark 8, 30, 34, beginning at the 34th verse. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, listen, let him deny himself. Listen, that... You can't walk for God and, and walk in the same path that, this, that you've always walked. There has to be some changes made. Listen, it, and if thou canst believe, sometimes we think, the devil will tell us, listen, God don't care nothing. God don't care nothing about you. God don't see you. God didn't hang on that cross for you. But listen, if thou canst believe, you can see the salvation of God in your life. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Listen, I go to that a lot, I know. But listen, we need to understand that if we live this life unto ourselves, what he's talking about there, that whosoever will save his life, whosoever will live life unto himself, that whosoever is not willing to take up that cross, But you want to live life unto yourself. You want to live life 
following your own thoughts and your own wants and your own desires. Listen, in the end, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Brother Brad sings a song in the group. There's only two winning hands. Listen, and they were nailed to a cross. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. Listen, if you're willing to give up your walk through this life, doing it the way you want, listen, in the end there's going to be a reward. But listen, we have to believe. We have to believe that through faith. Because there's no other evidence of it other than his word that he left. And listen, this word is, there's a, there's a whole Bible here. It ain't just a couple of sentences or a couple of pages or a couple of paragraphs. Listen, he cared enough that he wanted to be sure. that he left you a road map. He left us a road map. We don't have to guess, but we can know. But listen, if we believe, if you believe, if we believe, there's going to be some action on our part. For what shall it, the 36th verse says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, we believe. Some of us have been here a long time. And if we didn't believe, we wouldn't have made it this far. But listen, through believing, there has had to be some endurance. There has had to be some action on our part. Listen, we can believe the Scripture, but do we believe it enough? The Bible says not just be a hearer of the Word, but be a doer. Said, if any man heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like to show you who he is likened to. He is like likened to a man that dug deep. You know, if you know anything about building what anything, you don't have to be no uh, engineer. You don't have to be no carpenter. You don't have to be no uh, concrete man. And but listen, you anybody with any sense at all that has any. Well, I won't say, let me change that, not in any sense at all. But anybody that understands anything at all about a building understands that there's got to be a foundation. If you can't, you know, down in Kentucky sometimes, you know, that ground's so rocky that, you know, why you'd spend six months trying to dig in a six foot in the ground or five or six foot in the ground like you normally do to build a pole barn. Why, you'd be there six months trying to drill one hole. So what do you do? You dig down, son, till you find the rock. You dig down till you find the rock, and when you find the rock, you can set your pole on it. And it, it'll be there till Jesus comes, unless a tornado or a flood or something washes it away. But listen, we have to put some action. You know, don't just dig, don't just, don't just build on, on, the, on the sand. Because he said, a man that built his house upon the sand said the storm came, the winds came, and the house fell, and great was the fall. Let's go to uh, Matthew, chapter 11. 
The Bible there I just read is talking about taking up your cross. But in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. It says, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You know, I just preached a funeral, I guess it was last week, a young man, 44 years old, that I had known for, got acquainted with 20, roughly 20 years ago, and been to my house many times, and Help put siding on my house. He was a friend of Daniel's. And I got word that, that he had passed. And come to find out that he had OD'd. You know, a good hearted, good hearted boy. You know, I married him and his wife uh, back around 2001. And he tried to give me money, and I said, I don't want no money. I said, one thing I ask of you. I said, come to church. You know, and he told me he would, and I guess he had talked to Daniel different times, and he said, you know, he said, your dad, he said, he asked one thing. He said that I, we'd come to church. He said it. He said, I never did. He said, now your dad doesn't have the church anymore. And, you know, that opportunity, I guess, to come there was, was past. You know, and I preached a little bit about the cross of Christ. But then I went to this scripture here. You know, I've told people at different times over the years that I believe that as long as there's breath, you know, the devil will tell you that you've done too much, you, you uh, have been too mean, or you've waited too long. Excuse me. Can't get by without it. But you know, I believe as long as there's breath in your body, that there's hope. You have hope. But it's too late. Once, you know, in Ecclesiastes, it says that a man is just, and the, and the beast, a beast have one thing in common that they both have one breath. We only have one breath. We only have one life. And when that breath is gone, when that, the breath of life is gone out of you, the opportunity is gone. The opportunity to believe, the opportunity to act upon it, the opportunity to believe the Word of God, that, listen, he said, I go away.
to prepare a place. And if I go away, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. But listen, I preach down there. Listen, the cross of Christ is not as heavy as the yoke of sin. There's a cross. But listen, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Lay down the yoke of sin. And take on the yoke of God. He said, for my yoke is easy. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, we've heard about God. Some of you have heard about God all your lives. And you believe that there is a God. But do you believe enough to put action behind it? Do you believe enough to trust Him? You know, this this walk... With God, you start out as a babe and you don't know where it's going to lead you. You don't know where it's going to take you. But neither did Abraham. You got to have faith. You got to trust in God that once what he started, he is able to perform. What he's, you know, if he starts you on this journey, listen, you've got to believe that he's able to keep you to the end. I want to read one more place and then I'm going to close. If they'd go ahead and come back to the music. You don't have to turn here or nothing. I'm just so I can get my eyes cleared out where I can see. Somewhere I got another. Ah, I'll just use this old, this in here. The third. The third chapter of Revelations. I'm going to, I'm going to read in the 18th verse. It says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see and as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Listen, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, all things are possible through God. I love you. Listen, please. Please. Trust in God. Reach out to God. Humble yourself before God while, there, while there's 
you still have opportunity. If thou canst believe, God bless you. Alder's gonna, we're gonna open up the altar, take time to speak with the Lord and take a little time to fellowship with him at the altar of prayer and let him know what's on your heart this morning. If you have need in body, if you have an ailment or you have a need of prayer, we'll have a start a prayer line up here and we'll have the, the elders of the church anoint you with oil and pray over you, believing that God will work. Amen. The altar is open. We want you to take time out to uh, give God his due this morning. Whatever you have need of this morning, God is the answer. He has the answer. He'll meet you here at the altar this morning. Everybody come and pray, would you? Take time this morning. Take time to talk to him. Take time to, to voice your heart to him. Open your heart to him. Let him know what you got going on. Everybody come and pray this morning. Pray with these that are praying. If you, uh, you don't have anything that you want to pray about, come and pray with these that are at the altar this morning. Everybody come. <laughs> 